Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Prasant Vaiswaran. Oh, let me just get on to the next slide here. Um, so, just a quick intro of myself and what we're going to talk about today. Fair warning, there will be some live coding. So, let's hope for the best. Um, so, as I mentioned, my name is Prasant Vaiswaran. I work at the uh, IBM lab in Markham. Uh, is anyone familiar with the uh, lab in Markham? It's a big building that's by 404. Ah, uh, you are. Are you, are you from IBM? No, but, uh, no one ever is. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not like the, uh, the Hersley lab or anything like that. We don't do any cool like physics related things. It's just DB2 and compilers and commerce. That's the team I'm in. Um, you're welcome to drop by and visit. We do have an open area for people to come check it out. Not, not a lot of people know that. Um, but we do have like a little small museum there with the cheese cutter and everything. Um, anyway, so tonight I'm going to be talking about Tmux and Go. Um, two things uh, that I think go really well together. Um, has anyone here uh, used Tmux? Okay, good. Not everybody, so this won't be, it'll be a refresher for, for a few. Um, so Tmux um, is an application. Um, it's, uh, it's a terminal multiplexer. Um, it's, so what is a terminal multiplexer? Um, a lot of people, when they think of Tmux, they think, oh, it's that thing that um, has a whole, whole bunch of windows in your terminal. And essentially, yes, that, that is what it does. Um, so TTY um, stands for um, what, we, what would you call um, a teletype writer. Uh, which is sort of like an ancient term um, that we still use to call our terminals. Um, but back when uh, there was actually physical terminals, these are the things that, I, I'm surprised I don't have a photo of it, but these are the things that you would see people sitting in front of that looks like a keyboard. Um, and also sometimes they have a screen, sometimes they print out. Um, so the information um, is, 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 well, essentially it's an input-output device um, that um, the operators would use to run applications um, or commands um, in like a computer, which could be either located locally or in like a room upstairs, downstairs, or somewhere else. Um, so essentially, it was like what we would now use as a terminal, but a physical device. Um, so we're used to seeing it on the screen, but before they would actually use like punch cards to get information in and printouts to get output. And then they evolved into actual um, like uh, CRT displays, um, which essentially just you know had a screen for the information, and the keyboard would be the input. Um, so the so name is a little bit it's misleading. I mean it's not. I mean really it's just a terminal. Uh, so the multiplexer part is you can manage a whole bunch of these sessions, um, and I'll go into why that. Why I think um, that's one of the uh, stronger suits. So one of the features of, of Tmux. Um, so in, in this diagram, quickly. Uh, so Tmux kind of sits uh, in between. Um, your sessions, and your session, sessions are essentially uh, new instances of the terminal. And then as a user, you would use uh, Tmux to kind of manage that for yourself. And uh, we'll go into why. And this is just quickly, for, so for folks that aren't familiar with Tmux, essentially what you're looking at here is my terminal window. You can see at the top, there's two tabs. So a lot of people, when they use the terminal, um, if you're a developer that needs to run like a server or a linter or uh, some other tool that needs to be running while you're working. Um, a lot of these tools are CLI applications, so you run them in the terminal, um, and you sometimes have to run more than one. Um, and a lot of people on my team, um, they don't even use tabs. Uh, like if I'm, if I'm going over to troubleshoot something with them, I would do like an alt tab on, on, on the terminal, and to the terminal app, and I would see one window, but then I would move uh, another window, I was like eight open. Uh, that's, I don't know, has anyone ever had that experience where you go to help somebody and you're like, I don't know which terminal to, to look at? Um, so tabbing, if you're not using Tmux, please use tabs. Uh, that'll make everyone's life easier, including your, yourself. Um, but this is not a Tmux tab. Those are just tabs into the terminal. Tmux is actually these two panes. Um, so the, the top three right there, uh, that's actually just Vim. The one at the bottom is a pane, and the one at the top is a pane. And those panes are actually different TTYs. So they're, they're actually different terminals. Essentially, it's like having you know, a bunch of terminals in the same window. And that's what Tmux is doing. And in the bottom, the green stripe, that's the uh, status panel. And you can see in the center, 
um, it shows uh, the two panes, uh, the, uh, the two windows that I have, that I have uh, in, in, in Tmux. So not only does it manage um, like a multi-terminal view, but you can actually have um, other windows, which are essentially tabs in Tmux. That's essentially what the two at the bottom are. I, I, hopefully this isn't too, too much in the beginning, but we'll, we'll simplify this as we go in a bit deep. And feel free to ask questions as I'm doing this. Um, all right, so some of the features of Tmux. So as I mentioned earlier, it uh, manages multiple uh, TTY sessions. Um, some of the other interesting uh, things that it does that maybe aren't used as often anymore are, um, I'm just calling it a keep alive, but essentially what that means is if you ever used a terminal before and you're just using the raw terminal and you accidentally you know, like quit it um, and you weren't running like something in the background, you just you essentially close this, the, the program. Um, when you do that with a, a terminal that's running Tmux, you don't actually close anything. The, the way the architecture is, it's a server client based architecture. So um, not just the architecture, but the, but the actual process is running still even though you closed just the client. Um, so essentially you're just, if you, if you imagine you know, what I was trying to explain in the beginning with a physical device, you know, if you broke your, your physical terminal, the computer software is still running on the computer. You, know, you can still connect it with a different client you know, so that's, that's basically um, what the Keep Alive is, is what I'm calling it. Um, and there's some advanced features or advanced use cases that take advantage of that. Um, for example, if um, you want to uh, pair program with a colleague um, either uh, remotely or locally, but you just want your own keyboard, um, you could share that session with, um, with someone. And essentially what, what, could, what, what will happen is you could be typing on your computer and they could be typing on theirs, but the input is going to the same session, into the same pane. Uh, so effectively, you know, it's pair programming with two different laptops. You don't have to like, get two keyboards and mouses and things like that. Um, it's, a really, uh, it's actually pretty elegant to, to, to try it out. Uh, well, to, setting it up is not elegant, but once it starts working, it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> which goes in, we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, so it makes remote workflows more resilient. And what I mean by that is, um, if you ever worked in a, a small company, you don't really have a lot of the fancy tools, uh, the more expensive tools that big corporations have, and you kind of just get by with like SSH for like 90% of anything. Um, so SSHing, uh, which is a totally different topic, but you can think about that as like a remote session. Just, just play along with that. Um, but you know, our networks aren't resilient. They go up and down. Your computer might run out of battery. You might accidentally close the terminal. Um, so anytime you do an SSH connection into a box that's like on you know, DigitalOcean or, or AWS, and you're doing something like you're looking at the database logs or you're, you're working on something, the last thing you want to do is be doing something um, and lose the connection, um, especially if you were editing a file that was, I mean, people do this. You're not supposed to, but um, this happens all the time. So a quick way to kind of protect yourself with that is just make a Tmux um, session on the server, and if you ever get disconnected, you can just connect right back into that session. Um, and that was something I learned. That was the first thing I learned. Um, I was actually using Screen at the time, which is an older sort of like terminal multiplexer. Um, I moved off to Tmux for other reasons, but uh, same, same principles. Uh, monitoring a lazy background job. These are basically just built off the whole server client architecture where you could use Tmux to run a server that you normally would run on the foreground, but because you're just running it in a terminal session, you could close the terminal and still be running. So it's like a really hacky way of having like an HTTP server uh, running on your laptop if you need to host something or demo something. Um, a lot of those workflows have now gone away because everybody just does an NPM install of like HTTP server or something and just runs that. Um, ooh, shouldn't touch that. Oops. So, um, so why does so what brings me to, where's the go part to, to all this? Uh, a lot of this has been about Tmux essentially up to this point. So the reason I think um, go comes in is there's a lot of ways to customize um, Tmux. Um, there's a status panel that we'll go into uh, where you could um, kind of customize. Uh, I don't want to go give too much away. <laughs> there's also um, templating and uh, scriptability. Uh, more on that later, if uh, you know if we have time. Um, so the status pane, if we go back to um, to the first image that you're looking at, 
um, is basically uh, the, the thing that I, well, there it is. It's the arrow. It's, 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 so that's the status pane right there. So status left and the status right, uh, you can put something in there. You could um, do whatever you want in there. Um, the one in the middle of the window list, you can't change that. Um, that's just sort of like a marker to let you know your window list. Um, so let's go see. So why go? Like why would I use go to customize the status point? So I think this is pretty obvious. I mean, we're at a go talk, but I'll go over these. Um, so one of the important things, one of the things I like about Go essentially is uh, it, it, it makes it very easy to share. I'll go into detail. Um, uh, one second. There we go, my presenter notes weren't showing. Um, so shareability, what that means to me is, you know, if I wanna give you something, I could just give it to you. Like I could give you the, the binary. Uh, that's exactly what, what Go allows me to do is that I could compile the application as long as we're on the same architecture, I could give you the binary and you could run it. Um, now, how is that really different? Well, I'm, I come from a background where, um, I, my background is, is started off in, in front-end development, so I come from a very JavaScripty background. Uh, dependencies are a lot better than they used to be now, but they're still not great. Um, the fact that you have to have NPM, the fact that you have Node, the fact that you have to make sure that um, I have a package lock file to make sure that you know, when you install your dependencies, they're the same exact version of the dependencies I had those problems kind of disappear when you package it up into a binary and you just distribute it that way. It's also great for operations team. Um, if there's any operations folks here, you, you know how great that is. Um, low level libraries, uh, this is, I mean, this is my list of things why, why I find it great. Um, the, the syscall library really gives you a very uh, a granular, um, a very fine grained control. So for Tmux especially, um, you, have, you can, Sometimes you have to hack around the fact that it doesn't really have a, a great API to, to, um, to drive the application. And having a, a rich, tested, documented um, library like syscall and, and the and exec library um, really help um, kind of uh, with those shortcomings. Um, and then and speed, this kind of goes in hand in hand with the, with the, the binary. Um, it's compiled, um, I mean, JavaScript platforms are, the run times are really quick these days. Um, uh, so, you know, it's debatable, but I think speed is, is definitely, uh, it's, not, it's not something that's it's sucky at, so that's good. Okay, so thus far, you know, we kinda, uh, I'm gonna go into a live demo now. Does anybody have any questions before we go into a live demo? No? Okay, so I'm gonna go over the first part of, oops, of, oh, this was supposed to come when I said live demo. Um, of kind of, we're gonna go through the status pane. I'm gonna show you how you can customize it real quick. Hopefully it doesn't turn out that way, but if it does, at least we got a good laugh. <laughs> that kid's hilarious. He's like a pro soccer player now. No, I made that up. Uh, okay, so first issue, I need to leave. I need to switch screens so that, um, oh, you know what, sorry, let me fix this. So to the left of me, to the right of me. Sorry, folks. Ah, here we go. You know what? I'm going to mirror my screen. because. Yeah, I'm going to mirror this because uh, this is going to be insane. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. You have to. Oh, right. If you go into, like, arrangement. Ah, there it is. Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, how's the font? Is that perfect? Uh, let me make it a bit bigger. Too, too big? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to make a really toy app, a, a toy status update. We're going to, uh, if everybody here, uh, I mean, don't you hate it when somebody asks you the time and they give you like the real time, like you wanted the Linux time? You don't ever have that problem, no? No one's, no one's asked for the time? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. 
So we're going to write an app that is going to show the Linux time at the bottom left, so you'll never have that problem again. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be really quick. And if it's not quick, I have a pre-compiled one that we could use. So the first thing we're going to do. Oh, you know what? This is so much better. <laughs> yeah, there we go. OK, thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, define our package. Let's import two things. Um, and uh, oh, by the way, I should mention I don't do Go development. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, as, as a daytime job, so uh, all of this is for me just uh, playing around and, and, and teaching myself, so uh, don't judge me. <laughs> uh, definitely feeling that flow. Uh, do I want to? Yeah, that's fine. So, so the, I'm just going to write an app that's going to output the Linux time. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to put that in the, in the plane. It's, it's a very simple app, but you can imagine what you could do with this, hopefully. <laughs> uh, so time dot now. What is this thing complaining about? Oh, I'll, I'll worry about that later. I think that should do it. Uh, cannot use, oh, right. Uh, that's right. Uh, since. Uh, 1970. That's that's pretty good. All right. Whoa. What's going on here? Not sure what's going on with my. Uh... Let's just reopen that. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes my uh, I think the resizing and all that stuff kind of messed up my uh, my vim. Okay. So this is done. Let's build it. Let's test it. Looks good. There you go. Tells the time. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, right here, I'm going to put the time so that I will now know, like forget this, we'll, we'll know the Linux time. So to do that, there's a couple important um, commands you should know. Um, let's quickly go back to this. So the tmx commands that we're going to use essentially fall, fall into these for. It's, I'll, this will explain why I go into the, custom, um, the scripting part later, but Tmux doesn't have a really great use. Uh, it's not great in terms, it's great at what it does, but if you ever want to like program it, like read its net pages to figure out how to do things, it's like CSS, it's insane. Um, so first thing you need to do, you need to know is that you could uh, you know, do all the, you can put things in the, in the bottom left. Uh, but it's important to know that there is a length and things get trimmed. So you need to make sure you set the length to something that would be good so that your information can be displayed. Uh, the other thing is you need to move the window pane, which is normally on the left to the center. And then you also need to set the interval so that it will execute your program at the interval you want it to. We'll set it to a second so that it will look good time. Um, and then finally, to actually set a command, the syntax is you have to put, like it's, it's weird, you have to put a number sign, and then a bracket, and then your command, which makes no sense if you ever worked in like Linux environments. <laughs> anyway, it's a little pet peeve. Uh, okay, so let's get out of there. Let's go back here. So, let's start off with the basic. I'm going to move this thing over here so that the window list is in the center, and it just, it just cleans up everything. So, I have some prefixes. Uh, basically, just like in, in, in Vim, when you get into the command prompt, you can do the same with Tmux. So we're going to set the um, status, oops, just with uh, to center. But this is spelling. Isn't that cool? It's top right. Um, and then we're going to set the status left uh, length to, uh, let's see. 50, oops, oops, so it's got his left length, 50. Oh, like three months of hips. I may have to pick it this I'll figure it out in a bit. 
have some advantages, but uh, does, does everybody know what they're doing? You should be second and fifth instead of 18 months ago. Oh my god, am I? Jesus. Maybe, maybe I was. Yeah, you know what? That was, that's why I wasn't getting the autocomplete. Yes, thank you, whoever that was. I have no prizes. <laughs> um, so we set the length, we moved to the, um, the window list. The next two things I'm going to do are I'm going to. Um, I'm not going to set the interval yet. Let's actually you know, install and get the binary in my system. Um, so I'm using TMUX right now, which is why these pains are jumping around. Um, so this pane, I'm in the uh, folder. I've already built it. I'm going to install it. So I think I call it just that. There it is. Now it's in my path. So now we're going to do set status left. And, uh, oops. Should have this up later. Uh, okay, that's set. You can see the time zone. It's not updating. So that's uh, set status. Oh, jeez. Uh, interval to one. Look at that. Now we got real time. So, uh, would anyone want to see something a little slightly more interesting? Yes. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, cool. So, on the next thing, I got something called Toolbox. Uh, I'm not going to code this because uh, it's a lot more. <laughs> uh, basically, I was, uh, it's just, I'm going to get the most recent tweet, uh, tweet, tweet um, from a user. Uh, I actually went to go to uh, the one, but I was doing this really quick and I didn't want to figure out how to trim so I get the first line or at least one line or anything. So I'm just going to go with my own tweet because it's a nice simple one. Uh, it's already compiled, it's already available, uh, but to see it in action, let's just run it and uh, here's my most recent tweet. Uh, background for that is uh, Cyberpunk 2077 uh, is a game that's coming out that I'm really excited for. And somebody had said, if you want to know what your name is going to be in the game, pick the last place you hate at, and then your favorite console, put them together. So I'm subway Genesis. <laughs> That's, that'll be my handle in the game, if you're feeling for me. Try it out, it's hilarious. Um, so let's, let's look it up. So I say it's pretty easy to just set uh, rules, make sure I'm the right one. Set status left. I called it uh, tweet marks. So good. Uh, oh, I forgot to set the uh, global, so set status uh, left length is my right to point. Maybe it's even ridiculous. Uh, and then let's go tweet it. Oh, wait, let me set the interval. Uh, hopefully, I don't hit my, uh, my rate limit. Let's set to like uh, four seconds. Oops. Yeah. Uh, four seconds. And uh, let's do that. Wow, that's insane. You know what? Let's just go back to the uh, where it was. And let's go make a tweet. Jeez, there we are. Uh. Hey, nothing. I'm not sure why they didn't buy any movement. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I didn't train well. Okay, so that's how you can customize TMX from the status panel. So initially I wanted to make something really cool and then out of time, but I wanted to make something that can give me updates on PRs that I have to review, issues that I've stopped putting on. Things that um, really are a distraction. Like, I can check everything on do not disturb mode when I'm at work. Except my uh, fiance's text, of course. Um, and so that way I can tell uh, from a quick glance if I need to do something. Um, and I think there's some uh, pre made scripts that you could use if you want to look for and do that. Now, my goal is important is that it's very quick to kind of create that binary and share it with somebody and maybe just set it up themselves. 
Um, obviously, it'd be nice if uh, there's something that did that for them as well. And that is my segue into smooth segue into uh, the next part of this talk, which is about the templating and scriptability. So I kind of mentioned um, the, the fact that uh, Tmux doesn't really have a very clean interface for, uh, I think so. Yeah, it's one of the It doesn't have a clean interface for uh, programming it. Uh, so what I mean by that is uh, the, uh, the, the, way you, the way you can template and script it, um, you, would, you would normally want to look for like, um, like the plumbing type of commands. So what are, so what are plumbing commands? So like, if you think about plumbing, um, like, there's an article, I think it's called porcelain and, and plumbing. So the porcelain is like you can see porcelain. Like it's nice. It's the finished product. You go into a washer, you look at your nice you know, sink that's made out of porcelain. Now you open up the cabinet, now you see the plumbing. You don't want to see that, but it's there. Uh, it's what makes the thing work. Um, and, it's, and it's something you can actually use. Um, so that uh, Git has a really good separation there. You know, we use things like checkout, clone, you know, these common commands. Underneath, if you want to script Git and you don't want to use like lib git or whatever, there's commands that it has that you can run on the terminal that are the commands that it itself uses for those nice commands that we use. Tmux doesn't have that. Uh, it it kind of does and it doesn't. Um, if you read the uh, the man pages, it, it does have a good explanation of how to use it, but I find it very that it's not great. Um, so so I was thinking, oh, it would be great if uh, I wrote like a Tmux session manager. Oh my god, I'm so smart. Like, <laughs> you guys never thought of that before. So I did a quick Google search. Um, um, and this is a quick diagram that I wanted to show. Well, I should have went into it when I was explaining the complexity part. I made this nice diagram. Uh, it's total bullshit, but it serves my purpose. <laughs> Which is uh, the time to learn and the benefits. The benefit feature is putting the other one. It's very personal. Um, <laughs> now, as uh, I think, you know, you can load things up in features, but if it takes a very long time to learn, um, the benefit is really not high, you know, like it's low. Um, so Tmux, it's it takes a long time to learn, but it's in the wrong area that makes you know that. <laughs> um, but the benefit is high, and that's why a session manager would make sense because you kind of break down the curve so that people can use it more easily and it wraps away all that difficult bits. Um, and here's, a, here's an example of difficult things that should look easy to use. Like all you had to do was wash the car, but it's way more harder to try to get everything at once. And yeah, this is closely over exaggerated, but. Sometimes it feels like that when I'm using it. Um, so you know, I did a Google search. There's quite a few <laughs> session managers already. <laughs> so, so I was like, well, you know what? I'll just join them. Why not? <laughs> so I'm trying this new thing. It's called Guts. If you notice, I was actually using it um, to watch my comments. So it's very experimental right now. Um, the goal is to uh, well, you know, the goal is to um, create like a standard specification for um, like workflows uh, that use Tmux. And this is an original. Um, when I'm searching, there's several other uh, session managers that, that have tried this and, and have a great, pretty better one. Um, and it basically boils down to, you know, if you ever use like a dot Travis file or any dot file that stores configurations, well, why not use that for Tmux? Because it's essentially all configurable. So, but there isn't really a shared specification. So, I'm going to try to figure out you know, something that's shareable. Um, the other thing is, I want to get into the shared templates. Uh, this is a common workflow within uh, my team, um, uh, which is, you know, they want to have something that is set up for certain scenarios, like one for debugging, one for monitoring, one for developing. Uh, and obviously, you can script this yourself, but somebody else in the team wants to do that, but they don't. You know, they don't feel like they can figure it out, so it's, it's a bit of a wash. Like, some people don't do it because they just think it's hard, so I want to kind of remove the barrier there. Um, I want to make it super easy and straightforward, and provide an extensive way if you have, like, tries to hide the, uh, 
the CSS Nest of Tmux. Uh, this is fairly the same graph, but now with, with God showing you that it's highly, there's a lot of benefit and the time to learn is very low. This is true stuff here. And there's your the CSS with you, so you can see the comparison here. You know, you can see how much easier God is going to be with CSS. That's uh, it. Can you uh, reiterate some of the work, I guess, the uh, workflows that you think well, work well in Pima? Sure. Um, so, I, for me, it's, I guess the most common workflow is like doing multiple things at the same time. <laughs> um, so, if you're ever in a workflow that um, requires having like, sort of like a live output, um, maybe if you're writing tests, um, and you want to be able to, like, put in my TDD, and you want to catch right when you introduce the break, um, instead of switching to another tab later, because you forgot to check often, and then trying to work backwards, because you introduce, like, several breaks. Uh, obviously, there's other ways of, like, solving that problem, but for me, um, I have a single screen workflow. Um, I don't use multiple screens. I do own multiple screens <laughs> for some reason, but I only use one of them. Um, and for me, that works out really well because I just put up the, uh, the terminal like, as I'm showing on the screen, um, and I've had one flow for um, like pure development, and I've had, I've had another flow that's um, for searching and looking for things uh, in the code. Um, you can do that in the same, but sometimes I do that often that I want to switch to the pane and do it. Um, depending on uh, what you're developing, um, my friend uh, workflows. Uh, really work well with this because a lot of the tooling is in, is in the terminal. Um, and uh, the other thing about the workflows is if your tooling um, isn't, like, I'm fortunate that the tools uh, that I need to do my job are available in the, are available in the terminal and I don't have to use, like, a, an Eclipse, for example. I do need to use Eclipse, so for that workflow, I don't use Tmux, um, I just we have Eclipse. So it really depends on. I guess, um, how you work, if your tools are available for you, because at the end of the day, if you're just switching tabs all the time, you're breaking that cognitive um, flow. <laughs> and, um, and if you're breaking cognitive flow, uh, you, probably, you should invest on something else. Um, so, so it's really about just optimizing the flow layers. Cool, thanks. Yeah, that question. Do you have recommendations on resources that people can use to learn a bit? I do. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, I can actually uh, get a more conclusive, a bigger list. This is just a few that I started with and I forgot to do. Um, yeah, there's a lot of tools. There's actually a built-in tutorial in Ben as well, which I think it meant um, that you could run and it would um, show you uh, through, uh, by, by example, how to use them. Is there anything specific, specifically in that you're looking for, or just like general using them? Uh, yeah, sorry, I meant Tmux. Oh, okay. I apologize. Oh, no worries. Brain. Uh, yeah, uh, for Tmux, yes, um, I'll, 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 I'll uh, hit you up later. This is, and I'll put it on the thing, I'll share it. Uh, there's really good blog posts um, that go. Um, and explain how to use Tmux. The most important thing you should look for if you're starting out with Tmux is setting up your environment for your shortcuts because the ones that come out of the box are general. Yeah, I, if I can offer a suggestion as a fellow Tmux user, uh, if you like books, the, I just have to look it up. <coughs> Tmux Productive Mouse Fleet Development from Pragmatic Programmers yeah. is a fantastic book and has helped in my scrolling your slides. And I think there's a, that one's a good one. Um, there's an ebook that was, I figure out, that I'll put in. And I think there's a free one as well called The Tau or t or something. Okay. I think that one's, uh, it's free and it's free too. Awesome. That's the whole point that you should do, like an automated t learning thing. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, I should mention looking for help with guys, so. <laughs>
All right, thank you for the thank you for that.